Did you know that you can connect to local SQL amongst other local systems in Copilot Studio using a data gateway? That's exactly what I'm going to demonstrate today. Not only do I connect to the SQL server that's installed under my desk on my local PC, I'm also going to show you how you can update and create records on that SQL server using the power of the Power Platform and a local data gateway. So if this is something that interests you, please make sure that you like and subscribe. And without further ado, let's jump into the demonstration. So I'm going to start off today from my SQL Server. Now this is not installed in the cloud. It is installed on the little hard drive SSD on my local PC, 100% local. And the aim today is to demonstrate how I can access that local on-premise SQL Server on my machine via an agent in Copilot Studio. So before I do that, just understand we have four tables on this particular SQL Server. It relates to customer's equipment, invoice items, and invoices. And I have a query here that nicely presents that data from those various tables. We can see also that if I jump across into my customer table, I have 10 customers. In the first instance, I'm going to demonstrate how we can just query our tables using natural language in Copilot Studio, but then I'm going to add in the capability to create new customers, and we'll do this using tools. So in terms of how I'm going to connect to our local SQL Server today, I'm going to use an on-premise data gateway. This concept has existed for many years. We can already use it for Power Apps and Power Automate, and now, of course, you can use it for Copilot Studio and integrate nicely with your knowledge. Because knowledge is all about retrieving information, we're going to want to also carry out some capability to write back to our SQL Server, and therefore we can use tools and actions within the SQL Connector. There's also a lovely architectural diagram, quite simple, but I'll share both of these links in the description so you can have a read afterwards. Now, whenever you jump across to make.powerautomate.com or make.powerapps.com, there is this Gateways tab on the left-hand side. If you can't see that, go to More and you'll be able to find Gateways. This will allow you to download the Gateway client, install it on your server or multiple servers if you want to have a fallback for resiliency. But then that will install this lovely little client application here, this on-premise data gateway. Very simple installation. And now that it's set up and connected, it will now allow my Power Platform applications, flows, and agents to communicate with my local on-premise SQL Server. You can also use it for connecting to APIs via custom connectors. So if that's something that interests you, make sure you leave me a little note in the comments. I've, of course, done a little bit on custom connectors and building fake APIs just last week. I've done a couple of videos on custom connectors in general, but how about a custom connector that connects to a local API? Now, if I jump across onto Copilot Studio, I have a brand new agent with no knowledge and no tools. It can't do anything but answer general knowledge based on the language model. If I go to add knowledge and then jump into Azure SQL, we can see I have a pre-built connection that is already using this gateway and returning those four local tables that I have on my machine. Now, if I just select this drop down and create a new connection, you can see the various settings available here, including the ability to connect to SQL Server authentication using a gateway. So we have my gateway here, Daemon365 PC, that relates to the client that I've installed on my local PC. In my SQL instance, I've set up a local SQL Server username that has access to my server name on SQL and also my database. So jumping back to the pre-configured connection that I have, I'm connecting to my database called Equipment Invoices DB. My SQL Server is called Office PC SQL Express, and I can add all four of these tables as knowledge into my agent. With SQL now added to our knowledge, there's one last step. There's two ways to do this. I could either ask a question, I'll be prompted to create a connection, or I can click on these three dots, manage connections, and then from this window, I can create my initial connection and enable me to get testing. So I'll hit submit, the status is now connected. Now, if I jump across back onto Copilot Studio, I'll bring up SQL, which of course is installed on my local PC. Can we get the email address and also the address? So I'm hoping for sales at greenfield.com and 45 Oak Avenue. 
down on the test pane, I'll ask that question. And what's happening now under the bonnet, our language model is looking at our knowledge sources, it's querying our SQL using that data gateway, and it should retrieve that information, and then the language model will summarize, based on the response, the answer to my question. And we can see, as expected, it's given me that email address and it's given me the correct delivery address also. Because this is a test pane, we can also see the response from the SQL Server, which includes that object, including both the address and the email address. And for the end user, of course, they're going to see the reference which relates to that connection to our SQL database. If I want to progress to something a bit more complex, I can ask a question like, what have they ordered recently? And because the agent has the context of the customer, again, it should be able to query SQL and get details of the recent items ordered. Also waiting for that to complete, if I pop open SQL again and jump across to my other query, if we look at Greenfield Corp, I can see they've ordered five desktop tower Xs and two routers amounting to 5,350. So the agent has correctly returned the overall total, but it hasn't told me what was part of that order. So as a follow-up question, I'll say, can you tell me the items ordered in table form? And again, the agent will have that context and should be able to return that information back to me as I've requested. If we look at the response that we have back in the agent, those five desktop towers and two routers, just as a reminder, that matches what we have on our local machine, those five desktop Xs, two routers, with the line totals matching too. Now, if I was to ask a similar follow-up question, maybe about Urban Builders Inc., can you give me the same information about Urban Builders Inc.? I very much expect the agent to understand the context based on the conversation history that I've just had. I'd hope for a summary of the items. Of course, if that information doesn't come back, I can use natural language to request that information using, again, that on-premise SQL as the knowledge source for our agent. Looking at the data that's returned, it's used the last context, which is to do with the recent orders and the items ordered. I bring up SQL again. If we look at Urban Builders, we have one server rack and two projector HDs. So equaling the amount that we see on our local SQL server. Now, because these queries are happening in real time, if this SQL server is updated, then of course, the next time I query that information, the agent will get that most up-to-date information from our SQL server. So if you have other live systems connected to this local on-prem SQL that's adding information, then your agent will have access to this information as you ask those questions. But if you wanted to create a new order or create a new customer or update some details relating to a customer or an order, you need to add in tools. And over on tools here, I'm going to add an action for SQL that will allow us to create a new record for a customer. So I'm searching for SQL. I can choose insert a row, and then we can go through the process of adding this action and configuring it so it does, does exactly what we're looking for with regards to adding a new customer to our customer table on our on-premise SQL server. So with that particular action added, we need to go through the process of giving it a name because of course, insert row is quite generic. So I'm gonna call this create a new customer record. In terms of description, this is very important for the agent. You'll see if I hover over here in a few words, you need to describe it so the agent knows when to use it. So here I can say this will create a new customer record. And then as we go into the inputs, you'll see we have things like the server name. Now at the moment, this is dynamically filled. I want to specify that server and using the drop down and the connection reference that I already have, I can go through and choose the connection, the database, the table, all by choosing the custom values. And we want to access the customer's table. And by doing so, you'll see that already the first input parameter for customer name has come through. But if I click top right here for add input, I can add in the customer ID, I can add in their email address, the phone, and also their address. 
And these are all set up so that they're dynamically filled using AI. So if I now ask the question to our agent to create a new customer record, it's going to ask us for things like the customer ID and their name and their email address. And based on the information that we pre-supplied, we'll get a different experience. It'll be completely dynamic. Now, of course, for all of these input parameters, you can come into Customize and you can provide a description. This will help your language model to understand the purpose of each of these fields. I'm going to leave them as they are and we'll see what happens. So we'll save this. And if I now ask the question, can you create a new customer record for demo bird 365? Their email is damien at demo bird 365.com. What should happen is it'll look across our tools. It'll see that I have access to creating a new record. Because I haven't provided the customer ID, the, the phone or the address, they need to be filled. And therefore I'm getting questions regarding the customer ID. I'll say that they can be customer ID 99. And then I'll be asked questions about the other fields that are to be filled in. So we can see phone address and customer name. So I'll say that their name is Demo Bard 365 address is somewhere in Aberdeen. I won't provide the phone number. And you can see because I haven't, the language model is clever enough to identify that, that field is still not provided as part of my response. So I can say that is one, two, three, four, five. And by doing so, that will fill in the required information and it will send that across to my SQL server. And if I jump back across onto SQL, where I previously had 10 customers, if I execute my SQL query, we can now see that I have that record created all via my agent in Copilot Studio. So in today's demonstration, we've looked at how we can connect to on-premise SQL server databases using the data gateway. Copilot Studio, of course, can use that infrastructure in order to add your knowledge for SQL. But at the same time, because we have a connector for SQL, we can then use actions to update and create records on our SQL server by describing those tools and letting the language model slot fill those input parameters based on the descriptions we provided as part of our configuration. If you've got an idea for an on-premise system, legacy system, or indeed any agent, make sure you leave me a comment or fill out the form as part of my video description. And thank you very much for watching. I look forward to seeing you again sometime soon. Cheers.